Hey, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the painting and weathering video for the 148th SD KFZ 232 that's being donated to a buddy's ME262 diorama. This follows the build video where I was channeling the shakiest gun in the West. Let's get right in on this one. The tires are usually the first thing I paint. Let me just say quickly, everything you see here, I've purchased myself for personal use. I'll be using a circle stencil later to prime and paint the wheels. Priming is an extra step, but it helps reveal flaws, which are <laughs> common with me. Helps with base coat adherence and uh, base coat uniformity. As acrylic primers go, Vallejo are my favorite. They add vinyls to their acrylic solution, and I think it helps strengthen the coat. They spray really well with any aqueous thinner I have at low or high PSI. You can build it up slowly when there's all these angles to deal with. I find adding a quarter portion of thinner helps with needle flow, especially with the Vallejo paints. Their German gray is about as dark as the Tamiya. I'm going to lighten it up with a highlighting step later. My favorite lightener for German Grey is Tamiya Sky Grey. I've tried different greys and this one seems to work best to my eyes. Tamiya and Vallejo will not stay entirely homogenous in the paint cup. Just keep it stirred up and it works great. I've lightened the gray even more and am hitting all the raised details for more highlighting. I had a little speckling at the very end of my airbrush highlighting earlier. It becomes unnoticeable with the washes. It's very important to have this thin sufficiently. I'm trying to highlight and not actually paint heavy lines.
Now for the chipping. These were reconnaissance vehicles. They got scratched up. However, my buddy didn't want it rusted like a barn fine or scratched to kingdom come. This is a diluted sky gray, the color I used to lighten the base coat earlier. I've heard it a few times since. I think I heard it first from Panzermeister. Try to let the brush tip lightly dance on the surface instead of trying to actually paint scratches. Which works great for me as my hands tend to make the brush dance regardless. As this was a smaller scale, I didn't want to do the hairspray chipping. I was worried the chips would end up too big. I address those bigger chips with minuscule dark rust spots. My rule of thumb, if a light chip spot is big enough to put a dark rust spot into it, do it. Just be sparing in this step. The dark rust spot in the middle will make the larger light spot look smaller. Optical effect. So here we are after the chipping. Now for the detail painting. My tool painting is straight out of the LPJ model's playbook. I'll leave a link to his amazing 1 16th Panzer I build, which is where I got this technique from. I mute that steel look just a little with black panel wash later. I mean, it is a big step, and uh, where are we going to get the guns? <laughs> Those straps look like they were made out of leather. The exhausts are barely visible. 
so I'll go over with a bit of rust is enough. I almost never use flat white. I think the Vallejo Ivory or Elfenbein is a great off-white. So here we are. Before I do the washes, I'm coating it with a satin varnish. I want to protect it, and it helps the oils go on versus the matte absorbent surface. I add about 20% thinner to the HD varnish out of a 0.35 needle and 18 psi. Good old Tamiya panel wash. I use the black on gray models and the brown on dark yellow or DAK. This is an oil filter that I use for German Grey. I'm using this as a highlight. I think this just has the perfect rich black exhaust color and oily sheen. I prefer to dab instead of running it across. It creates a mottling effect. I thought maybe the fuel vapors coming up would accumulate dirt and dust. Instead of an oily black, I like to use a dark brown for streaking grime and use this AK product. Oils help you experiment, and you can clean it up or soften it with mineral spirits after.
For tire treads, I use AK's dust and dirt deposits to fill in the tread gaps. I'm using the light dust one here. Paint it on freely, making sure that you've covered the tread gaps. When you see it's dry, it rubs off. That cotton bud doesn't have anything on it. You can actually use your fingers, paper towel, whatever. I just like to do it this way so I can control how much comes off. This is the AK Light Dust Pigment. I don't hammer it on. It's easier to put it on than to take it off the underlying wet effect. You can see how that tread lights up. I'm using it here basically like a dry brush. I removed some of that with a clean brush. It was a bit too heavy. The wheels would still have a bearing oil effect, so I'm adding some of the streaking grime. I think it's great to have them look a little different. Some have more dust, more effect, more grease. This stuff is magic. It will make all the raised details pop, and also gives a metal look to the surface. Just go slow on it. I remove almost all the pigment from the brush before I start. Let me apologize, the microphone I have just does not like the letter P. It tends to make a popping sound. Whenever I'm wanting tea, I'm having a P. Remind me to stick to coffee. For the outer body, I'm starting with a dark earth pigment, just lightly. The light dust pigment I used on the tires after. Again, it makes the highlights pop and provides a dust effect as well. Work your way from the bottom up as the brush depletes of the pigment, so it gets lighter as you go up.
and give the overall model a very light dusting just to tie it all together. I put the dustier wheels in back and cleaner ones up front. I reattached some broken bits, added a little bit more dust, and here it is, ready for its permanent place as a sideline player in a ME262 diorama. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be well and happy modeling.